so there are different components of five one is a ui driver compiler meta store ex execution engine what are they these components let's talk more about them ui is nothing but your user interface where you will enter your shell commands or where you will enter your commands to retrieve the data created or manage the data so the shell command is nothing but your this shell is nothing but your this hive shell is nothing but user user interface that's one of the component which you, we need it in hive now other component is other component is jdbc driver jdbc driver so as we discussed before as we discussed before hive uses hive uses a rdbms hive uses rdbms let me take you back to the screen hive uses the rdbms to keep metadata information what is the metadata a data about the data a data about the data let's assume that you have created a table in a hive by using hive command like create table table name and you have given the columns and data types you have cre created a you have created a table in hive so it is now you have some structure for you have some schema for that hive hive table right so that information has to store somewhere where we need to store it we have to store in rdbms why we need to store in rdbms guys this is an important question it's also it's the important thing we need to understand right so you are providing a structure you are providing a structure on the data which is stored in hdfs right so that information we need to store where we can store there are two options you may say that one is rdbms and the other one is my uh, hdfs itself one is rdbms other one is hdfs you may ask why do we need rdbms to store the metadata why do we need to store rdbms to store the metadata can't we store that information in hdfs can anyone guess or can anyone try to uh, try to guess why we need rdbms for the storing the metadata why can't we store in hdfs itself can anyone tell madhu anila try to guess try to guess logically it's easy to read from the uh, our, I mean, rdbms rather than reading from the hdfs system very good very good so more i what complete idea is that okay in any other point so if you want to store in uh so if you store in hdfs the name node uh will be uh, name node data will it will be increased no? the name node will be overloaded name node will be over no 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 okay let me put in this way so if you store any information in hdfs if you store any information in hdfs so that information whatever you store in hdfs it's a flat files it's just a flat files correct if it is a flat files before processing the table or before accessing some query you need to first read that metadata information then you need to execute on the hive i mean you need to execute that the query right to reading the flat file is a difficult thing which is a con time consuming or which is the difficult to read the flat file to understand what is the table name what is the column name what is this right that's a difficult let me sh let me show you with a simple example let me show you a simple example let's say i'm creating a table in hive let's say creating a table in hive We'll talk about the data types, guys. Don't worry about it. Let's say this is a simple table. Now, I have some data in this table. Now, I have written something.
I have written the query like this. Select star from sample where id equal to this much. This is. Okay, now when I issue this query, it has to get the data from the HDFS. Ideally, the data has to come from HDFS only. Right? Now, when I issue this query, when I issue this query, it should understand there is something called a table, the name as sample. There are some columns like key and value. The data types are int and string. It has to understand that information. Metadata is nothing but what, guys? Your schema is nothing but what? Your table name, your column names, your type of the columns. Is there any primary key or not? In this, in the high, we don't have anything called primary key, but I'm trying to say, what is the schema? Is there any primary key or not? Is there any partitions or not? Is there any buckets or not? So what is the format they're using? The day, how the data is reading, how the data is, all the information will be available. That is called schema. If you keep the schema information in a HDFS, you have to keep in the form of file, right? As soon as you execute a query like this, select star from this kind of query, first it need to understand there is something called a sample. There is something called table called sample and there is something called some columns and all to get the info information it has to read the metadata if the metadata is a hdfs file reading a file is a very difficult task and understanding them and understanding this column this is this is the table this is the column this is the type of the column understanding that thing is a very difficult if it is a flat file in hdfs that's why high uses external database which is called rdbms if it is RDBMS, as Madhu said, so reading is very simple. If it is RDBMS, it's easy to understand. Okay, this is the table name, this is the column name, this is the type of the column. Oh, these are the this is the input format I have used. This is the output format I have used. These are the columns are primary. These are the columns are partitions. So this kind of information we can easily read from the RDBMS instead of writing an HDFS. Point number one. And the point number two is, if it is a RDBMS not only hive you can use any third party tools like java you can write you can use any other applications who can easily interact with rdbms and get the metadata information and read the data from hdfs if it is a flat file it's very difficult to understand it if it is a flat file it cannot read as a it cannot read as a schema it will read as a flat file only if it reads a flat file it will not understand the things so to process the data, to retrieve the data, to manage the data, we need to understand what is the table, what is the column, what is the type of the column. This type of metadata information we need to understand. This type of metadata under, data will understand when you have a when you have a RDBMS kind of storage. Are you guys clear why we need RDBMS? Why we need a meta store? This is a very much important point and very much th uh, the thing we need to understand. The people will ask you why we need a meta store as an external database. Why can't we store the same thing in HDFS only? Is this clear, guys? So, 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 so meta store is nothing but RDBMS. Yes. Meta store is nothing but RDBMS in Hive. Hive uses its own meta store. Hive uses its own meta store. Okay, so so when we install Hive, the the meta store is automatically installed. That is called embedded meta store, but we will not use that meta store. We have to install explicitly and we have to configure it. As soon as you install Hive, there will be something called embedded meta store, which is a DB Derby. The database name is DB Derby. That DB Derby comes along with the Hive, but there are some limitations with the DB Derby. We'll talk more about it. So that is that is a single user session. So you cannot multiple people cannot access the DB Derby. So that's why we have overridden that with the MySQL, Postgres, Oracle. If you can go with any database. That is the reason we have installed MySQL first. We have created yeah. a specific user for that and we have configured the high side at XML. Yes. I hope is everyone is clear about this. 
Akash, Anila, Devaji. This is the important point to understand before getting into hype. Why we need a RDBMS? Clear, guys? Madhu, Raghu, Aparna, Rohini, Srikant, Srini, Sulva. Yeah? Yeah. So this is the purpose of having a RDBMS as an external database in Hadoop. I mean, whenever using Hive. Right? So let's move to next point. You guys know driver, which is a JDBC driver. The JDBC driver, suppose any application want to talk to a database, apart from your SQL, SQL developer or something, we need a driver. Even your SQL developer also need a driver. Or even your workbench also need a driver. A driver is required to talk to a database to get the, fetch the data, manage the data. You need a driver. The driver is nothing but JDBC or ODBC drivers. Compiler is nothing but what are the data, what are the query you are writing. First, it will compile. It will check is there any semantic errors or kind of thing, and and as when if you don't have any semantic error, and it will check like the, uh, it will check the it will analyze the query and it will prepare some plans. That's called physical plan and logical plan. Yeah, you can look at here. The component is that passes the query, does semantic analysis on the different query blocks and query expression and eventually generate a execution plan with the help of the table and partition metadata looked up into meta store. As soon as you execute a query, first it will go and talk to a metadata and it will fetch the info schema information. Then it will go and talk to a, your HDFS to get that. So in between, if you see the diagram here, internal details, in between, it will prepare in between it will prepare logical plan that's called execution plan it will prepare the plan and as per that it will go ahead and execute the your HDFS and it will execute the query in your hive, hive engine or execution engine ideally by default we'll use the execution engine as a map reduce you can use the yarn or you can use something else also Okay, you can use something else as well, Impala, or you can you can take anything. You, Impala also similar to Hive. Okay, guys, is it clear about the dry compiler and Meta Store? The Meta Store, whatever we have discussed now about the database, that is a Meta Store. It's a component that store all the structure information of the various tables and the partitions in the warehouse including the columns and column type of the information the serializer and deserializer that's what input format output format and necessary to read and write the data and corresponding hdfs file where the data is stored so this information is required to read the data from the hdfs that storage we call as a meta store execution engine you know that so once the com the, uh, the component which executes the, your execution plan creates created by your compiler and the plan is it's a DAG, direct acyclic graph. It will prepare a direct acyclic graph. It means who has to execute first, then who has to execute next, then who has to execute next. So it will prepare some plan. So it will start applying the plan and it will start execute the plan. The execution engine manages the dependencies between these different stages of the plan and executes these stages on the appropriate system component. I hope everyone is clear about this. Any doubts? Sulba, Sunil, Srikant. Right? These are the major components of the hive. One is the shell, other one is a driver, other one is a compiler, other one is a metadata and the execution engine. These are the major components of hive. Clear? So in the short form, yeah. so shell, driver, compiler, meta execution engine and meta store. And your meta store. So why meta store? So I'm I'm putting more effort on the understanding the meta store because we need to understand what is a meta store. So the hive meta store uh, hive stores the schema of the hive tables in hive meta store, which is a RDBMS. So in our case, 
mysql because that's why we have installed mysql and we are storing the my that information so guys try to remember your meta store will store only metadata only metadata it will not store any normal data it will just stores it will just store metadata information it will not store it will not store whole data it will store only metadata metadata is used to hold all information about the tables and partitions that are in the warehouse by default meta store is running on the same process as a hive service wherever your meta store is running the same uh, wherever your hive is running the same place your meta store also will be running as a hive service and the default meta store is derby db derby it is called apache db derby so it is called embedded meta store but we will not use the embedded meta store we are going with the external meta store this is also one of the important point how to configure external meta store so you have to install a that that software first and you need to get the IP address of the way the service is running and port number of it and you need to get the connector and you need to configure your hivesite.xml if you didn't configure external thing what will happen hive will have its own meta store by default it uses that meta store which is called db-derby which is called embedded meta store it provides the two important uh, it provides two important but often overlooked the features of the data warehouse data abstraction and data discovery can anyone tell me what is the data abstraction and data discovery you can look at here without the data abstraction provided in hive user has to provide the information about the data format extractors loaders along with the query if you don't have a abstraction data abstraction if you don't have a data abstraction, if you don't have a metadata, ideally, if you don't have a metadata, ideally, what will happen? While you are sending your query, you have to tell what is the table, what is the column, what is the this, what is the extractor, what is the formatter, what is the all this, the information you have to club with your, your query if you don't have a external meta store. So, which is a difficult problem which is a difficult thing so because you have to read a file then you have to do something all, all those things right so this information given during the table creation and reuse every time the table is referenced so where that information will store that information will store in rdbms this is very similar to traditional warehouse system that's what i said hive is warehouse system on data warehouse system on top of your hive oh, sorry on top of your hdfs or hadoop the second functionality data discovery what is a data discovery this enables user to discover and explore relevant and specific data in a warehouse suppose i have used where condition so now i need to get the only that part of the data so if you have a metadata information it's pretty simple to get that oh this is the table this is the column oh, go, go ahead and execute it okay other tools can are built using this metadata to expose possibly enhance the information about the data and availability not only hive there are some external users you can create external tools like you can write your java application who can talk to hive you can write your uh, uh, reporting tools who can talk to Hive. You can connect your reporting tools like a Tableau, ClickView, anything you can connect to Hive to get the information. To connect that, you should have a metadata. If you don't have a metadata, they cannot connect. Your suppose you want to connect a Tableau to Hive, how Tableau will work? It needs a schema information, it needs a table information, it needs a database information. So if you don't have that, if it is there in the flat files, your Tableau cannot read that. The reporting tools cannot read that right that's why we need that's why we need the meta store the metadata has to store in rdbms hive accomplishes both these features by providing metadata repository that is tightly integrated with the hive query processing system so that the data and metadata are in a sync your data and metadata will be in a, both will be in a sync is this clear guys about the metadata 
any doubts please ask me we'll try to understand what it is is this clear guys yeah. everyone i'm looking for the responses from you yes sir Yep. So there are different type of metadata and the different modes I can say. Embedded mode, as I said, the high uses Derby as a database along with the, when you install, it will come along with the Hive. So both will be in a single VM, I mean single JVM. So and also the DB, the limitation of the DB Derby is it's a single user. You cannot, multiple users cannot connect and multiple users cannot perform the operation. Let's say if you have a MySQL server running on one machine, I can connect. You guys can also connect and parallel we can execute. But if it is a DB Derby, you cannot. Only one person at a time. That's a problem. And the local mode, there is something called local mode. Local mode is, will you go with some external database like MySQL, Oracle, or Postgres. The problem with the, the, problem with the local is, it will be there in the same machine. It will be there in the same machine where the JVM is running. But thing is, multiple people can access, but your Hive and your Metastore both should be in the same machine. So where you will get the, some performance degrade. So that's why we'll go in the real time, we'll go with the remote mode. In the remote mode, your DB will be running on the separate machine. Your DB will be there in the separate machine. Your Hive will be there in the separate machines. If it is in the separate machines and your so any number of people can connect to that and any number of people can process parallelly and also your meta store you, any number of applications can connect to your meta store and access the database your hive server beanline cli hive cli so some hue clouder impala catalogs or pick anything can connect to this metadata and they can they can go with the they, they can access the database that's why we'll always store your metadata information in a the database <laughs> clear guys there are three type of modes are available embedded local and remote mode In the production it will always will be remote mode only i hope everyone is clear okay so uh, i think from sorry guys uh, one quick question we can yeah go ahead uh, remote mode right uh, when there is uh, suppose tableau example the tool which you are mm. to the high end and display and some analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So that tool has its own inbuilt high capabilities to connect to that big data and other stuff? Yes, yes. yes, the tool will have that capability. Let me show you that as well. Let me show you that as well. So I do have a Tableau here, but it might be expired. Uh, it's only 14 days trial. I don't know, it might be expired. Tableau. So it will have an inbuilt inbuilt things where it can connect to anything. It connect to Cloudera, it can connect to Hortonworks, it can connect to MySQL, it can connect to AWS. It will be having all these inbuilt capabilities. I hope it might no, I don't think it's let's check guys, let's check. I think it's a 14 days trial. Product will have the ability to connect to big data using yes. high internal. Yes. Not only high, you can connect to MySQL also directly. I mean, yeah. okay. apart from the Hadoop, apart from the big data world, if you have a data in the normal uh, RDBMS, you can also connect that. So I, I think it is your pro. Oh, tomorrow. I think it will end tomorrow. Would like spice in single. Look, look at guys here. It can connect to Tableau server, it can connect to MySQL server, it can, uh, Microsoft SQL server, MySQL, Oracle, Amazon Redshift. Not only that, it can connect these many options. And you can also have any other ODBC things, it can connect. It connect to your MySQL, it can connect to MountDB, it can connect to Oracle, it can connect to Tableau, it can connect to EMR, it can connect to Redshift. Redshift is a database in Amazon. We'll talk about it later. It can, it can connect to any of the things. It can connect Hortonworks or your Cloudera. We'll also see here Cloudera. It can connect anywhere. Your Tableau has that option. It can connect it as a servers. Suppose if you want to connect to any files, yes, you can connect like this. 
you can connect to excel sheet you can connect to json files you can connect to some other file formats teradata teradata splunk spark sql you can connect you can connect to anything here hana sap hana salesforce anything you can connect your tableau is capable enough to connect any of the things okay so let's go back to our things so this is how hive works we'll talk more about it how it works later point of time because i want to bring i want to show you how it first will create a tables and all okay yeah before getting into table creation i want you to everyone please create a table um okay i think i need to download again i have clear actually i am facing some problem guys uh, this folder is not opening actually this folder has the data the recorded all the recorded sessions are there in this folder i don't know why it is taking so much of time to open it is not getting opened so that i will look at tomorrow i will upload the video tomorrow let's go look at here where is my auto 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 I think I should have yeah what is hive so I want you everyone open a document I mean open your shell and I want you guys to execute a small query to create a table we'll talk more about the configurations we'll talk more about the configurations I'll take you on each in detail but so I want you to just try with one small example small table creating a small table What else let me take and uh, I, I can create here I can create here yep everyone guys look at here I'm going to create a, a table and the syntax first I'll write in the notepad why because it's always a good practice to write in a notepad then execute in a hive then execute there so let me go in execute here only directly first I'll write in notepad You can write all in caps or small, it's no matter. Create table. We'll talk, there are different types of tables. That also we'll talk, guys. But let's first create some sample table. Create table, table name. Mm, I, I might have already have a sample as a sample test. First, first table. First table. And with the two columns I'm taking only two columns one is key as a int other one is value as a string varchar also will be supported here so latest version of the hive is started supporting varchar as well you can use either varchar or you can use either string and here we need to specify something called row formatted row format fields terminated by by comma i'll tell you what is this okay row format row format field row format delimited i think there is something called row format delimited fields terminated by row format delimited fields terminated by comma you can also store say as stored as text file you can also say this these are all options text file okay copy this first copy this go to your mysql uh, your hive right click paste it if anyone wants to take this create table table name your uh, your columns and data types row format delimited fields terminated by comma fields terminated by comma stored as a text file you are trying to say to your schema my data delimit the data which is there in hdf is the delimited by comma it means your structured data and row format row format means each row wise so in the row 
the, in the row the fields are terminated by comma so first comma is first field before the first comma whatever is there it is of column one after the co second comma whatever is there in second comma that is a field to third comma like that it will be divided let's assume that here let me create some sample data as well so try to remember guys when you are going to create a table first you need to understand your first you need to understand your data that's a very much important thing okay let's assume that here i have one java two j2e three Hadoop, 4, HDFS, 5, MapReduce, like that I have data, okay, if this is my data, now, if this is the data, let, let's say, I'll, I'll save it later, let's say, this is my key and this is the value, right, how your row looks, comma separated, comma separated, that's why, while you are creating your table you're telling my row format delimits the fields you delimit the fields terminated by comma and finally you store as a text file in hdfs <laughs> not only text file guys you can go with the sequence file you can go with rc file orc file you can do that okay we will see that in a later point of time so go here copy paste press enter if it has any error it will show else otherwise it will say okay and it is created and okay it is created so if you want to check okay let me show you a uh, normal uh, no, commands like how, how it looks like sql show databases if you want to see all the databases show databases it will show all the databases it will show all the databases default is the default database default is the default database others are the databases which i have created you can have your default database suppose if you want to use any database you have to use use and database name use sample okay use sample now if you want to see the tables show tables <laughs> show tables in this sample we, i don't have anything i don't have anything that's why it's zero tables okay so you can say use default show tables so I have these many tables. Now just now we created one table, no sample and uh, first underscore sample. This one, this one. So you can also insert the data in this. You can also insert the data into this table. We will see that how. Okay, we will see that how. First, you guys create the table. First, you guys create the table. Is everyone has created the table? Is everyone has created the table? Is everyone has created the table? Yeah, if you want to, if you, before that, you, you don't want to use the default, you can also create, create database, and you can give your own database name your own database name have training or training or you can give anything you can create a database like this and and you can use the training and you can execute this why i'm asking you to write in this uh, text file because it will be make use later that's why nothing else sorry guys Start here press enter press enter okay now i'll show you a small uh, interesting thing here go to your Go to your browser, localhost 50070, open this. So whoever running your uh, Hadoop services, you, you guys can open this. Go to 50070 and this. So Ravi, you said that whatever you create, whatever you create, whatever you create in Hive, 
that is a uh, on top of hdfs only but what is the location where it will store in hdfs where it will store there should be some location no suppose you are creating some directory suppose you are creating some file there should be some location no where the hive will store the default location of the hive is the default location of the hive is try to remember guys here try to look at guys here the default location of the hive is slash user slash hive slash warehouse this is the default location in your hdfs this is the default location in hdfs automatically in hdfs this location will be created for hive okay let's go there file browse and user hive warehouse and i have created training if you guys remember i have created db as a training your db your database name is nothing but a folder in hdfs a database is nothing but a directory the database is nothing but a directory in, in your hdfs go to a directory inside the first table the table is nothing but another directory in hdfs your database name also directory in hdfs your table also directory in hdfs right so whatever you created in hive you created database that's a folder in hdfs you created a table that is also folder in hdfs i mean directory in hdfs now you are going to insert the data <laughs> you are going to insert the data guys the uh, the latest version of the uh, 0.1 i think 14 onwards 0.14 onwards 0.14 onwards your your hive is started supporting row level insertions row level insertions so now i'm going to show you row level insertion insert into insert into first underscore table first underscore table key comma value values one comma java so i have taken java as a string i can take java is there any syntax guys is there, is there any syntax error in this insert into table let's look at go here paste it press enter semantic error insert schema uh, or found regular column training dot first table nor dynamic partition columns values uh, guys values keyword missing so values are there no is there anything i'm missing insert into table uh column one column two values let me try one more time i have executed this few days before that single code that or that uh, java is it it is double code yeah i have given double code i don't think it's a problem with it let me try with it not a problem Anyway, we never use the row level insertions, guys. In the production, no one will sit and enter the insert into insert into. No one will do that. I, there is some other way. But I want to show you the capability whether we can also do in row level insertions. That's the only point here. No, the error message will read first. Semantic error. Value, comma, key in the insert schema specification are not found. Uh -huh. First underscore table. Regular comma running to table or not dynamic partition column. Maybe I'll be. Uh, let me check. The problem is I'll be changing the things, guys. That's a problem here. Uh, Non-strict mode only. Okay, this is fine. This is fine.
error encounter near token let me see remove this the value as this Ravi, one doubt. Actually, mm. uh, uh, when you created the table, before mm. that you have not used any database. Means after that you have used training. So, uh, means, uh, could, you, could, you please, if, could you please repeat, sir? Sorry. Actually, you created that first table. You mm. before when you created that time you have not uh, used uh, that uh, any database. So, where it is getting created if you are not I have used, you know. I have used, right? I have created. Uh, where is? It? Let me show you that. I have created. Uh, yeah. Okay. Create database training. Use training. Okay. Then I have created. So directly, if we create, uh, it will be created under some default database. Yeah, first it will create under default database. Then later, I have to show you that uh, the, uh, the uh, how it looks in a directory structure. I have created training database. Then I have created use, using the training database. I mean data uh, database, and I have created table here. I have created table here inside the training. Now I'm trying to insert the data. Anyway, guys, so we'll see that in session. Anyway, my uh, the high walls is hanged. I don't know why. Maybe so many things are running. It's not working. Okay, it is hanged. So I look at into that, not a problem because so many things are running. My Cassandra is running, Dev Center is running, Eclipse is running, maybe the memory issue. But this instruction issue is something different. I'll look at it and I'll come I'll come back at it. Maybe some configuration I might have changed here and there. Value well, should come first. Oh someone is telling something. Could you please Values come first. Could you please give me complete syntax, Madhu? Anyway, I'm not able to execute now. Insert into table key value. I mean, I have done it, guys. I have done it, and sometimes uh, let me show it here. Maybe I might went somewhere. <sighs> Okay, guys. Uh, fine. Anyway, we'll see uh, rest of the things tomorrow. So I'll I'll show you that how to insert into row level. Not actually, it's not our primary thing. The primary thing is how to load the data in his uh, hive table. We will be loading the data tomorrow. I'll show that how to load the data into this. Okay.